Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. It's Sunday, November 19th. My name is Aram. I was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer back in August 2022. Here, still fighting every day for myself, for all the people out there that are going through something similar. Um, I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, you know, the reason I do these videos is to uh, promote education, share my journey. Hopefully I can help somebody, you know, that's going through what I'm going through. Maybe you have family members that are going through the same thing and hopefully this can help them out. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, today's video uh, is really about fasting and autophagy. Last week I put out a video, well actually on Monday I put out a video uh, saying that I'm fasting and everybody was asking me, you know, why are you fasting? You know, what's going on? You know, you need, you need nutrition, you need electrolytes, you need, you need to gain weight. Uh, also, my doctors, all of my doctors in the beginning were saying, eat as much as you can, take as many calories as possible. So on Sunday, I started feeling last Sunday. So today's November 19th. So last Sunday, I think it was November 12th. I started feeling sicker. I started feeling like my cancer is progressing. Um, I, it was starting to get harder to eat. Every time I ate food, it actually start, I start, actually started to feel pain. Never felt pain before. I've always felt pressure. I felt nausea, but I've never felt pain. So Sunday morning, sent a, a message to my oncologist, letting her know as soon as possible. And um, she set up an appointment for me on Tuesday. So a few days later, she set up a CT scan and uh, a, an appointment with her. Before I jump to Tuesday, I want to stick to Sunday. On Sunday, I went to the farmer's market here at Montrose. It's an amazing farmer's market that I go to every Sunday. And I came across a guy that I played basketball with all the time. We never really met or introduced ourselves, but I noticed him. And I said, hey, how's it going? I, I said hello to him. And boy, am I happy that I, I, I talked to him because he actually went through colon and digestive issues. And you know who you are. Uh, shout out to you, Cam. Thank you for all of the information. And on, on Sunday, he started sharing with me a lot of the links and a lot of the education that he learned throughout the years because he experienced this back in 2022. He shared with me nutritional information and he shared with me fasting links. This made me remember that months and months ago, I actually watched a fasting video with a gentleman named Fred Evard. He is a colorectal cancer patient survival survivor. And let me just give you a quick tiny snippet of the video that I watched months ago. This is gonna be just, just a quick like five, 10 seconds. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, so let me make this smaller. So I'm in front of the doctor and he tells me, okay, I have bad news. It's a, it's a, it's a cancer. The more I looked into it, the more I realized that there is a huge gap between the research and the world of biology and the world of medicine. The cancer is multifactorial. Therefore, the healing must also be multifactorial. That was so this YouTube video actually tells, talks about his experience. He did this uh, video with Jesse Chappis, and he really explains his, uh, what he went through. He, <laughs> it's a miracle story, guys. He had a 10-inch centimeter uh, tumor in his colon. He basically refused chemotherapy. He refused radiation therapy. He fasted for 21 days. After 21 days, they did a CT scan on him. And his 10 inch centimeter tumor shrank down to five centimeters. However, he was in pain because the tumor was around his nerve somewhere along his colon. So he basically did three rounds of chemo after that, and he went on a strict keto diet. He only ate vegetables and he ate ribeye steaks every day for three to four months. He also fasted. He did intermittent fasting in between all of the, in between those three or four months. So from September when he was diagnosed with stage three, borderline stage four cancer, into January 2021. So September 2020 into January 2021, he got his final scan and he was in full remission. He was 
cancer free. There was no cancer in his body. Hard to believe, but he is all over the internet, all over these interviews with doctors. He has his own website. Um, he just has an amazing story. He also has friends that did fasting, stage four cancer uh, patients who did fasting and they do not have cancer anymore. It's hard to believe, but this is his story. Um, so this was something I saw months and months ago. And, uh, you know, the links that my friend sent me and my own research, I went to my doctor's appointment on Tuesday and I brought up fasting to her. I thought she was going to shut that down immediately. You know, why are you fasting? You're, you know, malnutritioned. You're 130 pounds. You know, I thought that's what she was going to say. But um, she basically said the total opposite. She told me that USC has a uh, Dr. Longo. Dr. Longo at USC actually does data research studies on fasting in combination with chemo, and they found some very positive results. Yeah, I had to bring, I had to find out all this information and I had to bring it up to the doctors. None of the doctors that were treating me, none of the surgeons who were treating me, they never told me about fasting. They never told me about autophagy. They didn't even tell me that I should stop eating glucose and sugar. Glucose and sh sugar and carbohydrates literally feed tumors. They feed your cancer. Cancer loves glucose. So I would recommend to stop eating all glucoses. Sorry, that was like a side note. Um, so yeah, I brought this up to the doctor and she was being honest with me. She told me that all these studies exist, not just Dr. Longo, but a lot of other studies. So I went back home and I found this article. So let me just minimize my screen really quickly. I found this article here. It's, the, it's basically the City of Hope um, Cancer Center here in uh, Southern California. It's a really popular cancer center that treats strictly cancer patients. So what you need to know about fasting and cancer, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I just wanted to show you just a, a few um, you know, sentences here, and then I'm going to post this link and you guys can do the research on your own. Prevention and improvement treatment. Scientists at two other California universities concluded that separately that calorie reduction and fasting may help reduce cancer risk and improve the effectiveness of treatment in attacking cancer cells. So it's not just University of California, it's uh, uh, University of Southern California and University of California, San Francisco did these studies. I clicked on this link and what do you know? The same doctor that my oncologist mentioned, Dr. Longo, and obviously the link doesn't work. My internet's not working when I just want to show you guys. Here we go. I have it open. So actually that this that link leads to this. I'm so glad I have it open because for some reason my internet's just not working. Uh, it took me to Dr. Walter Longo's study, fasting and calor caloric restriction. So in this study, he, they didn't perform a total fast. They just did a calorie restriction fasting or calorie reduction fasting. And what they found was something remarkable. Number one, when you do fasting three days before your chemo, your, the, your uh, side effects from chemotherapy are a lot less severe. So you don't feel that sickness and that pain and fatigue from chemotherapy. Also, the number two thing they found is, and I'm just kind of putting it in layman's terms, I'm just, uh, that the cancer cells are so vulnerable and then they're in such a shock state that, uh, the, once you hit it with the chemo, it's a lot more effective and it kills the cancer cells a lot better than just chemotherapy alone. So I said to myself, is, is there any type of like uh, actual graphs that we can look at and see some data research? And I watched the video of uh, Psionic and he talks about starving away cancer. During his video, um, he posted a, a, a link to a fasting cycle's retard growth of tumors and sensitize a range of cancer cell types to chemotherapy. I found this actual data publication. And what it basically shows is 
um, this graph right here. I'm, I'll post this. Yeah, so, sorry guys, for some reason my internet is just not working. Anyway, I'll just zoom in. So this graph here, the this first graph here shows the percentage of tumor size and the effectiveness of chemotherapy, uh, fasting, and non-fasting. So as you can see, this line right here is the control line. This is no fasting, no chemotherapy, no anything. You can, and this study was done on mice with breast cancer. As you can see, when you don't treat cancer, it obviously just keeps growing, 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 and as it comes out of control, it metastasizes. When you do just fasting, it actually helps reduce the chem, uh, tumor size. However, it doesn't go all the way. If you do chemotherapy by itself, it helps with the, uh, the tumor size and it reduces the tumor size. But this red line here shows us that fasting in combination with chemotherapy actually really reduces tumor sizes. Um, and we can see there's, there's more here. There's another graph with DXR. DXR is dioxorubicin. This is a breast cancer chemotherapy and the same results. The control group is just, you know, the cancer grows out of control. Um, fasting alone, still the cancer is growing out of control. I mean, fasting alone is not going to, most likely is not going to do anything. Chemotherapy alone obviously helps, just dioxorubicin, but the combination of fasting and doxorubicin really is more effective than that alone. You know, these are real studies that are done by doctors who dedicate their time and, and, and efforts and their work is dedicated to doing this stuff. Uh, here is EGFD. You know, everything shows some positive results when you mix fasting with chemotherapy. I will post this onto the uh, description. Uh, so you can see, you know, as I do more research, I'm seeing that fasting really helps with anti-aging it helps with reversing alzheimer's it helps your skin and most importantly in my situation it helps to um, you know reduce cancer another thing that fasting promotes is autophagy autophagy basically means to eat thyself in greek auto and phagy is basically autophagy to eat thyself Basically, what happens during fasting is that your body starts to recycle bad cells in your body, which is, you know, it can be cancerous, it can be non-cancerous. And healthy cells, they become, in, they go into the starvation mode and they start eating away at the waste. And the bad cells get recycled and new, new good cells start to grow. Um, there's a lot more, you know, a lot more to autophagy, autophagy than just this explanation. This is just a high level, you know, information that I wanted to sell, share with you guys. So the role, I, there's another link here, the role of autophagy as a regulator of cancer metastasis. Autophagy acts in an anti-metastatic anti role via limitation of cancer necrosis and inflammation responses in early stages of cancer metastasis. In early metastasis, metastasis autophagy also reduces invasion and migration of cancer cells from the origin site so it helps reduce metastatic cancer if you do it early i wish i knew this when i first did my first line treatment of fall fox i wish i fasted three days before every um uh, chemotherapy treatment however I'm not going to lie to you guys. There's negative, there's pros and cons to autophagy. There's negative data also. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to be fully transparent. It says here, however, in advanced stages of metastatic metastasis, autophagy acts in a pro metastatic role via promotion of cancer cell survival and colonization in secondary sites. So there's good and bad. You just have to do your own research, just like, just like I am doing. In one of my comments, some person said, just let the doctors do the research and you be the patient. I couldn't agree with this person anymore. And to be honest, I, 
that person is a joke to me. We are, I think I mentioned this earlier, we as patients, not only cancer patients, anything that you're going through, we are the final decision makers. We have to do the research. Not that our doctors aren't the final decision makers, our family are not, our friends are not. It's us that have to make the final decision, the patients. Obviously, we're going to take into consideration every, all the recommendations. Obviously, we're going to follow the medical doctors, but we have the final say. And this is my experience. You know, guys, I'm doing worse and worse and worse after every treatment. It works. It helps me keep stable. But then I go bad. Then I have to start a new chemo. It works for a little bit. My cancer cells build up in immunity. And then I start getting worse. So I have to take some major drastic measures and changes to my treatment. I know it doesn't fall in line with in the blueprint of the Western medical treatment for cancer. It doesn't follow the blueprint. A lot of the nurses, a lot of the doctors, they're just all shook up when you talk to them about fasting because it doesn't fall in line with the blueprint. It doesn't fall in line with all the politics and bureaucracy and the insurance companies and all the clinical trials that are going on, you know, that's a whole nother thing. So I decided to do fat. I decided to fast and I started fasting on Thursday. I, I stopped. My last meal was on Wednesday. This was the day after I had the conversation with my doctor and she was in full support. She's not in full support of me not eating at all, but she said to mimic fasting. So just bring my calories down to about three to 500 calories per day and see how it goes. I decided to go full on fast. So on Thursday, I haven't ate Thursday. I didn't eat on Friday, Saturday, and today Sunday. So I'm on my fourth day of not eating food. Just drinking this fasting electrolytes. I ordered this. This has absolutely no sugar, uh, has no carbs, that has no fillers. It's just some really pure, just electrolytes potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, and a lot of other trace minerals. This will not affect fasting because it has no calories, no carbs. Um, also, I ordered some wheatgrass juice powder. This is supposed to be very good for digestion. I'll probably start taking this pretty soon. I'm planning on fasting after Monday's chemo, and for a few days after that, I'll see how, how long I can stay you know, not eating food. At some point, I'm going to have to eat food because it's just not possible to not eat food. Uh, so that's that's some of the data that I wanted to share with you guys. I mean, there's a lot more other articles that I, I researched. Um, and what really, really actually drove me to my final conclusion is the uh, interview with Dr. Eric Berg. So this is Dr. Eric Berg. And it's an interview with Fred Everard again. And Fred Everard goes really deep into explaining how he treated himself and he cured cancer. He also has a friend who I think is in his 60s and 70s. He had stage four cancer. It literally spread to his bones. There was holes in his bones. And he did fasting. And he's now cancer free. He has absolutely, he's in full remission and he's cancer free for five years. Uh, Fred, on the other hand, un unfortunately, he had a relapse and he has cancer in his prostate. He's not doing too well. Uh, you know, I'm supporting him. I go to his website, I watch his videos, I donated some money to his charity and to his, uh, to help with his uh, medical bills. So yeah, guys, I, I'm, I'm fasting. I feel okay. I'll try to see how long this is going to go on for. But uh, once I get off of fasting, I'm going to do a straight keto diet. Uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to put all the links into the description. I hope you still support me. I'm still fighting every single day for you, myself, everybody that's going through this. I just want to share this information and hopefully, you know, you find it well. Please comment, please like my videos, please share it with anybody that's, you know, would like to, to see this. You know, we live in this information society where all we can do is just share our stories, share the data, and it's very easily accessible. We have the internet, 
do your own research. I don't recommend this to anybody. This is just my journey. This is my experience that I'm sharing with the world. Thank you again for watching my videos and have a great weekend. And I'll put out another video, you know, maybe after my treatment, my first Irono TCAN treatment on Monday, and we'll see how it goes. Thank you guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.